All right, welcome back everyone to another episode of MC Eternal. I hope that everyone is having a great day. I know that I am. We're jumping right back on into things today. I have done a decent amount of stuff off camera. Um, a little bit of terraforming, a little bit of building, uh, some knowledge building as well. Uh, because we are going to continue on our path of bewitchment. So we started it last episode and uh, suffice it to say... I was not in the right place to get going on it because I have no idea what I was doing. Just completely honest with you guys. So um, I was kind of winging it as we went and I think we were starting to figure it out, but I think that I under anticipated the amount of knowledge I needed behind it. And so we didn't really get too much beneficial, uh, too much benefits out of that last episode, I would personally say. We did get some cool stuff set up though. And we are on the right path. So I guess that's a win in itself. So let me run you through some stuff that I did off camera before we jump into what we're doing today. Just to catch you guys up. So I moved our uh, atomic reconstructor from Actually Editions from our basement basement. Where we have our AE2 stuff and our Ender IO stuff. I moved it up here and connected it in um, just so we could use it a little bit more. And then I don't recall if I showed this on camera or not, but I did get an item transfer node set up to our redstone furnace here so that when we process ores, it kind of loops back through and is just plopped right into our main system. So we're not having to transfer um, from, a, from a chest to our system. It just goes right into there, which is perfect. So I have this linked up to our storage crate that we have hidden over under our warehouse. And uh, it seems to be working perfectly fine for the time being. So we'll just watch it and see how it goes because we have it set up right now that it doesn't handle a lot of throughput. So it's not going to go very fast. But if we're not sending a lot of stuff, it should be fine realistically. But again, we'll see how it goes. So what did I do off camera? Well, like I said, I did a decent amount of stuff. I don't think I really did too much over here. I think I've already shown you guys that we have now set up all of our fish. So I put them all into drawers over here and sorted them out. I don't actually recall if I showed you this or not, but I rerouted all of our fish so that they go right into our system and they will get stored right into their own individual drawers, which is perfect. Well, they're basic two by two drawers. So they each have their own slot. It took a little bit of time to weed them all out and make sure that they're all accounted for, but they're all there now. So we should be good to go. So they're not just all dumping in here and getting clogged up. So that's perfect. We have a ton of food possibilities going, which I always like to have. I like to have a lot of food, more than we probably will ever need. Uh, we've already shown you guys through this, so let me come this way. Everything starts blurring together after a while, especially doing a decent amount of stuff off camera. So coming up here to our hut, I guess probably the first thing that you could see is we actually have it finished so i went ahead i got a roof figured out and put on it and i really enjoy it a lot i think it suits it very well it's very you know like haunting like spooky halloween vibe to it which i'm feeling and at night it looks even better so what i did was a mixture between uh, chisel and bits stuff as well as the um, architecture craft items so basically using our our saw here our diamond bit saw as well as our architects table which we have down in our hut over there and that's how I got everything together and I think it looks really really cool it ultimately turned out really great um, we did well I did put in let me see if I still have them up maybe in our crafting no it's a trash can let me look through this to pull up what I put. So I started using these hidden lights from Stupid Things. They're super easy to make, just some glass and glowstone. And you can put them around like torches, but you don't see them. So I actually have maybe one or two up here that illuminate the top so we don't have a ton of mob spawning. It also gives a little bit of light accent to it, but we don't have to have torches just screwing about. And I even did that over here as well on top of our huts i do not have torches anymore i just have those lights which if i shift you can see it pop up here so that's how you destroy them you shift and you can uh, click and take them down if need be 
But overall, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. And we even have a chimney over here because, as I realized at the end of the last episode, for our cauldron, we do need a heat source under it in order to uh, have it function properly. So I built a furnace, or I built a heat source, a fireplace, into our hut here. And I put a piece of netherrack at the top and lit that so it gives the good particle effects out the top. So it makes it look like it's always going. If we take a look inside, not much has changed other than obviously our big fireplace now. And I have it so we can step up here and we have our cauldron right here. So it's pretty easy. We can easily throw things in here, easily dump some water in there. It just, it ultimately works out very conveniently and we're going to be using this a decent amount today. I also crafted up a spinning wheel. This could be used to make some of the wardrobes for Bewitchment. So if we take a look at Bewitchment, if I could spell Bewitchment. <clears throat> so I think some of the basic ones are like the cowl, the hat, etc, etc. And these bad boys... It looks like uh, you need witches stitching and in order to do that you have to get that in the spinning wheel with liquid witchcraft so you don't actually make the clothes in there but you make the string to then you can make the clothes out of within the spinning wheel so i've crafted one of those bad boys up just to get it set up in here because i knew we would need it at some point and then what else did i do um the other thing that i did notice was that these wither logs even if you place them horizontally because i've done this many times where we place them horizontally like that some of them will shift back to being vertical again i do not know why there's no real rhyme or reason to them because as you can see like some of them don't have moss on of them some of them do but they all ultimately shift back to being that position I'm really not that sure as to why that happens. So just keep that in mind if you're using it as a building material. You might run into some issues around that. Um, I didn't do anything else downstairs. I'll take you downstairs so you can see. But it's all the same. Nothing different. So we're going to hop back up here. And I'll show you outside. Because that is where a brunt of the work was done. So we have our walkway back to here. And I shifted things obviously. Because now we have our... Fireplace that sticks out a little bit more. I have some water going around the outside of that. We have our farm set up with some of our bewitchment plants up and growing here. We have our altar here and I made some nice pathways up through it. And I terraformed this whole area down here because we're ultimately going to really want to utilize it. I terraformed it, put down a bunch of loamy grass blocks or loamy dirt. And uh, I even pushed it out this way a little bit. We need to get some more dirt and kind of have it spread more. But I figured that this whole hilltop here would kind of be our swampy biome. And uh, I think that will be a really nice add to have. So we can do a lot of those kind of uh, darker feeling mods up here. Like Bewitchment or whatever may, may suit the vibe for it. So... Uh, but yes, like I said, we have our altar here, which you guys know from the last episode. I did craft this bad boy, a scorned brick herny statue, hern statue, I believe. I thought it looked badass, and it really added to the aesthetic of our area here. Uh, it was pretty straightforward to make. You just need to obviously follow the correct recipes for it. So you need some scorned bricks and then a bottle of hellfire, which you can get like so. The only thing that you might have a hard time finding is the dragon's blood resin. I believe I had picked some up in crates when I was looting at some point. So yeah, but he looks pretty cool. And then I took this hot spring water I had chilling out in my place and I just put it right here because this will give you regeneration. Um, and I feel like it really, again, just suited our whole vibe that we were going with here. So. But yeah, that was a lot of talking to kind of run through things. It was a lot of stuff that I did off camera here. I could even give you guys a little bit of a bird's eye view of what we're dealing with now. So really this whole area up here is going to be our bog. And I've even actually started putting a little bit of thought into what I want to do next and what I want to add. And I think eventually we're going to get into astral sorcery. And I think it'd be really cool to have some kind of big hilltop mountain here. 
and then have our altar on top. But there's a lot of caveats to that based on the mod and finding the correct spot where you want to have your altar and everything set up. So I'm not going to worry on that right now. But anywho, you guys aren't here for me to just keep blabbering on. We're going to get into more Bewitchment stuff today, like I said. So if we take our Book of Shadows and we hop into it, there are many things that we could go over in here, which we sort of touched on in the last episode. Now, the biggest thing that we're going to get into today are the circle rites. So one of the core sects of witchcraft is that of the circle magic, that of circle magic, I should say. By drawing circles of certain sizes and colors, as well as offering certain uh, rea reagents, which can do nearly anything from changing time to summoning entities and more. So this is what we're going to want to use to actually get our crystal ball up and going. So if we remember, we were progressing down the path in our quests here. Where was it? Under magic? Right here. So under our magic tab, magic and spell casting tab, we had a whole bewitchment area. And the next step was getting a crystal ball. Now if we took a look at the recipe for a crystal ball, it was a little bit confusing. We needed a ritual of foresight and we need glass, three uh, pieces of nether quartz and a droplet of wisdom. We need starting power of 500 and a running power of 50. Now, Again, when you're looking at it right off the bat, it's a little bit confusing because you don't know what all that means, especially when a lot of the entry stuff was very straightforward to craft in a normal crafting table. So this obviously is what we're gonna want to start with is our altar here. Make sure we have our altar up and running. And we only have 266 power in it, unfortunately. So we're gonna want to boost that up a little bit so we can have enough for our ritual but before we get to adding to that because we kind of touched on it last episode by adding the goblet there are other things we can add to increase the power but the first thing that i want to do is get some chalk up and going so if we take a look at our bewitchment mod and all of its items there right here are four different types of chalk that we can get there is the focal chalk the ritual chalk the fiery chalk and the phasing chalk each of them have their own crafting recipe but they're again they're pretty straightforward in order to do um, everything happens in a cauldron and for the most part a lot of them are going to start with this ritual chalk so really this should be the first one on your list to do is just ritual chalk and even if we take a look back at our uh, crystal ball this is how the pattern is we want to put on the ground in order to get the ritual going so we're going to want little piece of yellow in the middle so from our focal chalk focal point so i believe from my understanding this is always going to be the center point is using this yellow or orange color then we're going to have white around it and then purple so we're basically going to need all of them except red for the time being as we get into other rituals we'll need the red so let's start with getting some of this chalk going we're going to watch some birch soles so hopefully we have some birch saplings we unfortunately do not so we're gonna have to get that together so why don't i collect some of these resources and uh get some stuff crafted up i won't go too far so you guys can also be able to follow along but i'll get some of the materials together so that we can get the ball rolling a little bit quicker with this ritual Alright guys, so I got everything together that I believe we are going to need to get the ball rolling a little bit more. So, if we jump into it, we are going to start with the Ritual Chalk here. So, as I showed earlier, just before I cut away, you need Birch Soul from Bewitchment. You need a little bit of cobble, any kind of cobble. And then some Wood Ash, which just comes from either making these Soul Vials from saplings or just taking saplings and burning them in any kind of furnace so any kind of smelting you'll get this wood ash from it and this kind of shows you how you can get it as a product from the witch's oven as well so really your witch's oven is going to be the best bet to do it in because you yield the most results from that so we have everything together for this one so let's get this crafted up 
and bada bing, bada boom, we have our white chalk. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to make. So next up, I'm going to get the focal chalk. Now this one we are going to need a cauldron for. We're actually going to need another ritual chalk. We're going to need a little bit of liquid witchcraft and a gold nugget. So let me go and bring up some gold. Let's get a little gold nugget here. We have our liquid witchcraft and we have this. But just so that we stay consistent, I'm going to craft another ritual chalk just so that we have it. Now, this is a point I do want to make to many of you who are trying to do this later in the game, like how I am. If you do have any kind of magnet on you, make sure you turn it off before you start doing this. Because you are throwing items into a cauldron, and so if your magnet is on, it will instantly pick up those items, and uh, it will interfere with you completing this recipe. So, just something to keep in mind. Now that should be going. Now the thing that I wanted to double check on really quickly is if we head back to our main chapters here. I'm a little bit curious on, hmm, and I don't know if they have them here. Oh, here we go. For the cauldron. So one of the things I read about the cauldron is before you can make anything in it, you want to throw in like a mandrake root or something along those lines. Now I'm not 100% sure on that. Because it doesn't really say you need to. So... Yeah. It doesn't say you really need to. So I'm going to try it without doing it and see how it goes at first. And then we'll just kind of go from there. So I set this up so we can easily throw things. So we're going to throw, was there an order to this? Let me just double check. Any order? It says chalk, liquid witchcraft, and then gold nugget. So we'll do it in that order just to play it safe. Chalk. Uh, we kind of missed there. Hold the phone. All right, so chalk, liquid witchcraft, and gold nugget. And that gives us our focal chalk. Okay, so that does prove it that at least for our chalks, we don't have to throw anything to start with uh, into the cauldron. We don't have to. So that one was pretty straightforward, pretty easy to get. Now, the next one that we're going to do is the phasing chalk because that's what we need for our ritual itself. Um, obviously, there's also the fiery chalk which why not we'll probably do that as well so again once we need a ritual chalk we need this dimensional sand from bewitchment i'll show you in a second how we make that and then glowstone dust so dimensional sand pretty easy you need a witch's oven which obviously we already have and the easiest way to get it is using the eye of ender you can use sulker shells or chorus fruit um, but if you haven't made it to the end yet if you haven't made it to being able to get these, this is going to be your easiest because all it takes is an ender pearl and blaze powder. Now, I think this is actually kind of funny because to make an eye of ender, you need ender pearl and blaze powder. When you put it that ender uh, that eye of ender in a witch's oven, it then breaks it down to blaze powder and then dimensional sand. So basically, it's almost crushing up the ender pearl. Anywho, so I don't know why you they had to do it like this i feel like it's kind of just you're taking additional steps where they don't need to be any but it is what it is so uh, you do get that blaze powder back uh, from your eye of ender you're basically just losing an ender pearl so i crafted up a few here just so that we could uh you know obviously keep the ball rolling on things so i'm gonna get another ritual chalk so we have it and then we need one of those. We need the ritual chalk and then we need glowstone. Just like so. And then obviously we need some water. And that's the thing that I do not have automated on this is the water. So I need to run out every single time and manually get some water, which it's fine for now. I don't think it's too big of an issue. So let's get this going. So we're gonna throw our chalk in. We're gonna throw our ender sand in and then our glowstone and we get our purple phasing chalk 
or our dimensional sand, not our inner sand, dimensional sand. So again, very, very straightforward on how to do it. And that's all the ones that we need for our ritual to get started. Now, I am going to get the fiery chalk up and running because why not? Pretty straightforward. You just need ritual chalk again, the blaze powder, which you could easily use from your dimensional sand, and then some netherrack. All very, very, very straightforward. So let's get another one of these. Ooh, we are a little low on wood ash. So like I had mentioned, you can easily just use... Let me get those in there. Oh, actually we had some in there. So I don't even need to worry about it. We already had some wood ash in there. Perfect. So we can actually craft this bad boy up. Just like so. And then we need some netherrack. Just one piece. I think that was on the end. We need our chalk. And then we needed our blaze powder. Just like so. And we're going to need another bucket of water. So we'll grab that. Put our bucket in. Let it start boiling. Once it starts boiling, we know we're good to go. I don't, I don't know if that necessarily makes a difference, if it's boiling or not. But for a peace of mind, it's a good, good step to take just to make sure. So we're going to throw our chalk in. We're going to throw our blaze powder and then our nether rack. And we get our fiery chalk. So now we have all of the chalks that you can get with Bewitchment. And we can thus start doing our circles, which is pretty cool. Pretty good place to get to. So let's head back out here. We're going to go over to our setup here. And as you can see, we're still racking 355 out of 355, but we have a times four modifier on it. Now you may be wondering about the modifiers and I myself, I'm not going to lie. I'm still a little bit confused on it. So if we go into the book here, we can read on modifiers. So they are grouped into four categories, cups, swords, wands, and pentacles. An altar can only draw from the first item added of each suit and items of the same suit do not stack. So basically what it's saying is you just want one of each suit. So if we go to the next page, this shows you the four different ones, cups, swords, wands, and pentacles. So for us, I have a goblet down. I do not have any swords on there. I do have our candle up there, as you can see. And then pentacles, I crafted up a pentacle over there and I placed it right there. That was a very, very easy recipe to do. You just need liquid witchcraft, which is mandrake root, in a witch's oven, you'll get liquid witchcraft, and then some silver nuggets and iron nuggets, super easy to make. So, I think we should be ready to get the ball rolling. Now we can take a peek at circles here and see how these work. So they show the small, medium, and then large. For those there's also different teleportations ritual shifts purification perception wow there's quite a bit of stuff in here now this goes over circle drawing so this in uh, circle drawing instantly draws a circle according to the chalk type held in the offhand with the size dependent on the ingredients used interesting So as you can see, they get bigger then as you add more. Hmm. Well, let's, let's try it this way. We're going to try it how it showed it to us for our crystal ball setup. Yeah, that's how we're going to try it to start with. So let me go back into here. So we're going to want three. It's going to be a three by three, I believe. So we're just gonna to wanna to make sure we leave enough space. So if we do this one here, I don't know if we have to put ones in between, if we have to put spaces between them or not. What's the next one, white? Now these do have durability on it, obviously, as you can see from us placing them down. Hmm, this isn't 
So that's the pattern that we have. And as you can see, we're getting to some particle effects here. I guess we'll try it. We'll see what happens. So we need some, any glass, block of glass, three of those, and then a droplet of wisdom, which I should have all of that. So let me go back into here. Wow, it looks like our purple one actually takes a decent amount of damage or durability from that. Unfortunately, that's a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping that it would last longer than that. So what was I saying? We need that, we need quartz, and then we need glass. So let me get glass. And then we need three things of quartz. One, two, three. So we'll see if this works in the way that I'm hoping it will, um, since we do have particle effects. So if we drop this, we drop all those, and we drop that. Nothing. Okay. Maybe it's because we don't have enough power. All right, let me double check on this, guys, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I did a little looking, and I think I actually have it set up properly now. Uh, so basically, we just did everything a little bit too close together when we tried to set up the circles last. And so you want it to be more like this, where you have the one dot in the center, we were right with that, and then you have a ring outside, and then another ring outside of that, but spaced apart. So it's actually a circle rather than just a cube or a square. So for this one, from the center one, I went three out, and then I went three, space, and then three, and then three. So basically, it's almost like a, what is it, seven, right? It'd be like a seven by seven, but you just cut off the corners like so. And then the next one out from that is only one space like so. And you're basically trying to leave about a one space gap between the whole entire thing. So basically it went one here in the middle, two gap, three wide, one gap, five wide. So, a little bit confusing you basically are adding two every time you go out but that's how i think it needs to be set up so we're going to try it now um, i also did a little poking around for our altar i have it up to 563 power now which should be enough for what we need to do and i did that by adding in more trees now we can get rid of this we don't need this i just use that to show you guys our circle here but I added a bunch of these dragon's blood wood trees in, as you can tell. And they actually kind of suit the vibe up here. But as I was reading the altar that we have, the power increases not necessarily by the modifiers, but the amount of plants. So I was a little bit confused on it, which is fine. I'm, I'm correcting myself now. So the modifiers do help, but the best way to get your power is from plants so just having tons and tons and tons of plants and trees around it it doesn't matter if it is minecraft or modded any kind of mod it doesn't have to be from bewitchment obviously we have a lot of bewitchment modded plants around here but they just want plants in general so the more plants you have around the better power it is going to get and the bigger diversity of those plants the better the power as well so if you just have a ton of let's say these mandrake seeds or these mandrake uh, plants all over the place you're not going to get as much power as if you had a mandrake you had a hellbore you had a wormwood you had roses you had pumpkins you had melons you had this tree you had that tree that is where you get your power so yeah so i added a couple of those in and i think it still looks fine i don't think it it takes away too much from the aesthetic we're trying to go for it's not really the exact bog feel i'm feeling but in order for this to work properly that's how we have to have it set up so maybe i'll add some vines to them to just kind of tie them in a little bit better but i think for the time being we are at a good spot with those but anywho so let's try this out we should have it set up right so if we just throw things into the middle so um, let me try to do it in the correct order as it said here so glass then the three quartz and then that so glass and then one, two, three, and then this bad boy. 
Now, don't you have not heard of such rights? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I would have thought for sure that would have done it for us because we have the circle set up properly, correct? It is set up properly, yeah. And it does follow the pattern here. So purple on the outside, then white, and then that on the inside. Starting power is 5,000. Ritual of Foresight. We are just having no luck with this one for some reason. And that's one of the harder things with this mod because it has been rewritten so many times and it is a spiritual successor to witchery that uh, it's a little bit confusing. And even looking through the book, which confused me a little bit more, was not actually seeing the crystal ball in there from Bewitchment. Obviously, we see it in here, but maybe it's just something that we need to learn. Because it's a ritual of foresight. I mean, there's no foresight over there. And we don't really have anything. We have witches' devices. So that, that, the cauldron, and that. Yeah, see, see even in our book, it doesn't have anything. Now, I'm wondering... Are there other books that we need to add to this? Like to extend it. There's the Magicka book, but I don't believe that's what we're going to want. So I guess we're just going to have to keep going in a different path for this, unfortunately. Uh, because for whatever reason, we can't craft this unless I am completely doing something wrong here. Uh, but anywho, I will continue to look into that, but it's not going to stop us from continuing on with the mod. Even though we can't get that necessarily done, there's plenty of other things that we can do to um, keep us busy with this mod. So one of the things I do want to talk on is the circle drawings themselves. So I went around, I used my chalk to draw all of these. But if you want to change them and you don't want to go around to, to erase all of them and reset them down, there are rituals of marks. So normal, uh, what was this one? Lesser, normal, and then greater. So basically what you want to do is you'll take one of these materials, depending on which one you want to do. You'll take a piece of chalk like we have here, you put it in your offhand, you place down the materials in the middle, and then you click on the circle that you want to change. So, if I am not mistaken, what was that first one? Clay, I believe? Because I think with the size dependent on the ingredients used. So I think if we wanted the outer one to be bigger, we would have to use the greater one, which makes sense. But let's just do an example with the smaller one in the middle, and all we need is clay for that. So let's do that. We'll grab a piece of clay here. We'll throw it down here in the middle. And then we should be able to... Um, actually, I don't want it to be purple. Do we not have the fiery one on us? We do not. Well, we'll just have to do purple. But purple's fine. As you can see, changed it for us. Now, if we want to change it back, just grab another piece of our clay. We can throw it down there. And it's kind of interesting. I'm curious... I noticed just a second ago, it started floating around in a circle and I didn't know if it would do it again. It doesn't seem like it. But if I click on this again, I've not heard of such rights. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what I'm necessarily doing wrong here then. Okay, 
Ah, hold the phone here. Maybe we figured this out. Okay. So I think maybe instead of dropping, I just need to click on it. Okay, so I've, I guess I've been thinking about this all wrong. So let's try this. Glass, three quarts, and then this. And then if we, let me take this off of my hand and we click on it. It's doing something and it did nothing. Wah, wah, okay. It did use up some of our power, but maybe, let's give it a go one more time, just out of curiosity, okay? We'll see how it goes, because you can see our power decreased a bunch, and it's still unfortunately not kicking us out enough. So I don't know if we don't have enough power or what is going on with it. Hmm, that is quite particular. But yeah, if we wanted to do the second ring, we need clay and wood ash, and then the outer ring is two clay and two wood ash. So I think we've pretty much figured it out. So let me just sum it up real quick for you guys. This is how we want to get our circles going like so. You saw how to make all of the different chalks. If you want to switch these circles, I've shown you how to do those quick changes using those few, uh, those few materials so you can easily change them. When you do want to change them, you need to click the item onto the center ritual focal point, and that'll change it for you. We've gone over the uh, altar and how to give it more power through having plants and trees and everything around it, as well as the modifiers to help boost that power, and I believe the range as well. So obviously we don't have to have this right next to it. <clears throat> now the only other thing I did not touch on in this episode is that you can actually have another ring outside of this. So there is a four, a third ring, I guess you could say, because the middle one isn't really a ring, it's a point. So you have your first ring, your second ring, and then there is actually a third ring that can go on the outside. So, but we just don't need that right now. We're still starting off. So, but yeah, I think that is a good place to stop at. So guys, we're going to end the episode there. I think in the next one, maybe we'll just mix it up and do some more exploration instead of continuing on Bewitchment because I feel like uh, we need to just throw a little little mixer in there, even though uh, Bewitchment is actually pretty interesting and there's a lot of cool stuff that we can still explore with it. Uh, and I'd like to go over it. I think it's good to have a break episode and go out and do a little bit of exploration maybe. And I also wanted to modify our sword to include this um, lifesteal 3 on it so we can boost up the damage on our sword but again that'll be in the next episode so guys thank you so much for tuning in today i hope you all enjoyed the episode if you did feel free to leave a like down below or better yet leave me a comment let me know what you're thinking on this series what you want to see if you have any questions i'm more than happy to uh, chat with you all down in the comments if you're new to the channel you want to follow along hit that subscribe button and bell notification it lets you know every single time i post a new episode to the channel that being minecraft crashlands or before we leave but other than that guys thank you for sticking through till the end catch you all in the next one thanks bye